Hi, this is IK Handel and welcome back to part 16 of the rigging tutorial series. In this video I'm going to be looking at the Dynapose option which is this button down here on the bottom bar and what it can do for you and why it is so powerful. But before we do that let's just go into our object select mode grab this IK Handel with the left mouse button and drag and you'll see that the arm is moving from left to right across the screen. If you use the right mouse button it moves in and out of the screen and you'll actually see this more clearly in the top down view in this screen at the bottom. So if I right mouse click in and out you'll see it moving in and out towards the body. If I was to left mouse select a bone nothing happens or the mesh nothing happens again so at the minute this is a bit limited because if I wanted to make an animation the only thing I can actually do is drag this IK handle, set the pose there, record a keyframe, move on in time, set a pose there and record another keyframe and the software TrueSpace would interpolate all the frames in between and you'd get the movement between one keyframe and the other. But obviously that's a bit limited, I can't do anything with the rest of the mesh. If I come into Dynapose mode, I've still got that with my left and mouse on the IK or left and right mouse button, my right mouse button in and out again, so nothing's changed there. But Dynapose also gives you the option to select an actual bone and move or to select the actual mesh and move. And in addition to that if you left mouse click on a joint, hold control and use the rotation widgets, you've got forward kinematics which can also be keyframed. So it's a much more versatile tool. The other thing that you can do is currently if I drag this uh, mesh at the bottom you'll see the mesh moving. If I select this lock I can in real time enable and disable locks as required. So all in all Dynapose is an extremely powerful tool enabling you to rotate joints, grab bones, IK handles, the mesh itself, keyframe everything and in addition you can in real time activate and deactivate the various locks. So it's a very powerful tool and uh, one that you're more than likely you're going to do all your keyframing in when you come to make an animation. Let's have a look at the options for Dynapose. So we'll just have a look at the stack view and if I was to right mouse you'll, on the um, Dynapose icon you'll see that we have the character posing options up at the top of the stack. So let's just control and left drag those down onto the screen just to make it a bit more room. And we'll have a, a look now at what the various options do in the character posing options screen. In the character posing options screen the first line is for the coordinates. This is for the left and right mouse buttons and what type of alignment these buttons use within the screen. Currently it's set for screen aligned. So let me just show you uh, how the behavior for that which is basically if I drag a left mouse button sorry I've just played a little trick on you uh, you'll get left and right and if I was to use the right mouse button like so. Just for fun I applied the character posing screen to a cube and attached it to the bone <laughs> just for a laugh. Okay enough of that nonsense let's just unattach that and we'll delete the object. Uh, let's delete the bone. Get rid of the bone. 
And there we go, we're back again. Okay, so right mouse click on Dynapose button. I'll just drag this down. And this time it's the proper uh, screen and uh, not a an object with it pasted onto it. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, so screen aligned basically in Dynapose is the left mouse button goes from left to right on screen and the right mouse button goes in and out of the screen. If I drag upwards with the left mouse button you'll see on this screen here it's raising the arm. Okay, if we go into a screen, same thing. That's the left mouse button, and you'll see it's moving in this bottom left screen. You'll see it's moving parallel to the body from left to right. And with the right mouse button, it's moving in and out of the screen again. The difference here is if I rotate my screen, left mouse, you'll see it's pulling it away from the body because it's now diagonal to the screen. And with the right mouse, it's given a different behavior again. So in screen aligned in the manual what it says is that it's a default setting and is used um, for the general manipulation from a perspective or camera view. Uh, it creates a coordinate system for movement that's perpendicular to the ground and which uses the screen X and Y the movement you create will change depending on where you're looking from as I showed you um, if we rotate the screen you'll get a different movement if you rotate your view to the side and use a left mouse button you can drag from left to right uh, if I uh, rotate the screen it'll be rotate it'll drag from left to right on the screen as I see it. So it's screen based rather than object based. In the screen mode the manual tells us that the screen is similar to a line screen in that it uses the screen X and Y for movement but it uses in and out of the screen as the other axis for movement rather than perpendicular to the ground. So let's just have a look at what that does. Well, first of all, we'll select the object. Down a pause with the left mouse. We get the same motion. Drag it upwards, it goes up vertically on the screen. And with the right mouse button, it's using in and out of the screen rather than the uh, perpendicular which was uh, being used in the screen aligned version. Have a play with them. That's probably going to be the easiest way for you to get an idea of which you're more comfortable with. These are all options and basically when you find one that, that gives you the movement that you prefer then it would be a good idea to uh, stick with that mostly. Let's have a look at a couple of the others. We've got World, which basically left mouse, same thing. Right mouse is bringing it up rather than in and out of the screen. So it's giving you the vertical movement on the mouse. Uh, if I was to drag my left mouse upwards, it's bringing it in and out of the screen. So the options for the mouse buttons have changed slightly compared to the other two. If I was to use the joint, it's just going to move in relation to the joint. So again, I've got left and right, but if I use my might right mouse button, because the shoulder does have an joint limits to move in and out, in this case it is, but if the um, joint limits up here on the shoulder weren't open enough for the shoulder to move in and out, nothing would actually move with the right mouse button. 
So that's the coordinate options. Uh, you've got the choice of joint, screen, screen aligned and world. Have a play with them, see what you're most comfortable with. Personally I usually go for either screen or screen aligned. We'll come back to the dynamic lock type, uh, minimum bones, distance, etc. in a second. I'll just cover another couple of small ones here. Uh, the lock position, um, if I select the item, uh, go into Dynapose, I'm going to get turn off a couple of the locks. If I have lock position on and I drag the mesh, it'll stay in the same position in the world space-wise albeit it'll rotate around, but if I take this lock position off I can actually start to move it around in world space. So that's all that does. Show skeleton, very obvious. Anything within the body is hidden or shown depending on the option that you've used. Okay, we'll call it a day for this video and I'll see you in part 17 where we'll cover the dynamic lock types and minimum bones etc. See you there, IK Handle.